Okay, all right. Well, it's been a heck of a day today. Um, you know, jobs and family and uh, bosses, right? Life's full of stress, isn't it? You ever get stressed? Yeah? You know what does it for me is, it helps me is caffeine. You had your caffeine today? You know, coffee, tea, one of those energy drinks? It's good for you. It can, a caffeine can actually make you smarter. Did you know that? No, you didn't know that. See, what happens in the human brain with caffeine is it blocks an inhibitory neurotransmitter called adenosine, which is a good thing because then you're firing more neurons and uh, collecting better, healthy neurotransmitters, and it can actually enhance your brain function. And that's why I say coffee is my best friend. <laughs> so speaking of brains, brains are really popular these days. Have you noticed that? There's brains are in the magazine, brains are in newspapers, brains on TV, everywhere. It's brains, brains, brains. There's a lot of myths about brains, though. Like, if you have a bigger brain, you're smarter. That's not true. Albert Einstein, in fact, had a relatively small brain. So speaking of size, this will be interesting. When a woman is pregnant, her brain actually shrinks. Did you know that? That's true. Well, what's interesting is a man's brain is already 10% larger than a woman's brain. Now, that doesn't get me anywhere in my house, that's for sure. But listen to this, guys, before you get cocky about this. Even though a woman's brain is smaller than a man's brain, it has more nerve cells, connections, and uh, functions at a higher rate than a man's brain does. Ladies? Amen. <laughs> there you go. I knew that. My wife and I have seven grandchildren, and one thing I've noticed about, about babies is sometimes their heads are really big. Have you noticed that? Do you know why? Your brain right now is about the same size as it was when you were first born. Wow. Okay, here's another brain fact. Listen closely to this, because this has implications for what you're going to hear a little bit later on. Right now, in every second of your life, you have thousands and thousands and thousands of chemical reactions going on in your brain. That's incredible. Why all this stuff about brains, though? Well, what I'm going to share with you tonight may be stunning, but it may also resonate with something deep in your soul with the concept that we need to elevate the well-being of our children. I want to talk to you about the Adverse Childhood Experiences Study. It's called the ACE study, and I believe this is the beginning of opening doors and opening minds so we truly can elevate the well-being of our children. Now, what you're going to hear tonight is a very, very brief overview of the ACE study. There's so much more to learn and understand, and I hope that you will seek out that information. So please don't draw any conclusions about yourself or others based on what you hear tonight. Okay. The ACE study is the result of a partnership between the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and Kaiser Permanente Health Research Center in San Diego. It's a massive study from the 1990s. It involved uh, almost 17,400 adults looking at their medical histories, doing full medical workups. And these people were middle class, educated people with good jobs and great health care. They're us. They're just normal, everyday people. 17,400 is a massive study, by the way. And it involved researching with deep research and deep questions with these people about the adversity they experienced in their childhood. Now, when I say childhood adversity, what I'm talking about is stress. You see, how adversity and trauma affect a human being is in the brain, primarily and it's called stress. And when a child experiences stress, it, it triggers that stress response system which we have in our bodies, which is mainly cortisol and adrenaline, the chemicals in your brain. But when it's strong, frequent, or prolonged in a child, it can become toxic. It can actually bathe the brain in this uh, deadly mixture of chemicals. It's called toxic stress. And that's what the ACE study is about. It's about how adversity can become toxic stress in a child's brain, and how that toxic stress can inhibit proper brain development and body development, and ultimately 
have pretty profound implications throughout our lifetime. So what are ACEs? Well, the investigators, Dr. Robert Anda and Dr. Vince Folletti, had to put a framework around what ACEs are. So they first defined what are adverse childhood experiences. And there are 10 categories of ACEs within these categories of abuse, neglect, and household dysfunction. So an ACE score, for example, would be zero to 10. You had no adverse childhood experiences, and then all the way up to 10. And what they also found was that the more ACEs a person has, the more risk factors you have for some negative health and social outcomes. So let's take a look at some of those outcomes right now. Now these are just some of the outcomes that were the result of the research in this study, directly connecting ACEs to these outcomes in adulthood. Now it's no great leap to think that a child that has been physically abused all of his life or her life is going to have problems in, li in life later on, more than likely. Problems holding a job, getting a job, interviewing, problems in school doing math, problems in relationships. No great leap to think about that. But who would have thought that a child with seven ACEs, seven of those adverse childhood experiences, would have a 365% increased risk of ischemic heart disease, our nation's number one killer? That's what's incredible about this research. It connects all of these ACEs to the risk factors of having these health and social outcomes. This is another thing the ACE study found that was within this study group of 17,400, 51% of them had an ACE score of between one and three. And 16% had an ACE score of four or more. On a scale of 10, now remember, four is a tipping point for a lot of these negative health and social outcomes. So keep that in mind. Did you know that Montana did its own ACE survey? Did you know that? Probably not. They did. In 2011, through the Department of Health and Human Services, Montana did its own ACE survey. And here's what they discovered. 43% of Montana adults have an ACE score between one and three, and 17% have four or more. Four is a tipping point. But it's really not much different than the, the original ACE study. In fact, 28 states have now done their own ACE surveys. And guess what? All of these results are very consistent across the nation. No different growing up in Montana than it is growing up in Southern California. No different in growing up in Montana compared to New Jersey. Same thing. ACEs have no boundaries, no geographic boundaries, no economic boundaries, no gender boundaries. ACEs have no boundaries. They are us. So when we talk about the ACE study, what we're talking about is this childhood stress that results in toxicity. What do we do about this? This is the question we often get. What do we do about this? Well, we don't talk about brains for a minute. Let's get back there for a second. Because remember when I said adversity can result in toxic stress, which can then result in uh, inhibited brain development and body development, which can result in lifelong implications. I'm gonna share with you something from Dr. Bruce Perry. Now, Dr. Bruce Perry is the nation's guru when it comes to child trauma. When Columbine happened, they called in Bruce Perry. When 9-11 happened, they called in Bruce Perry. He's that level of expert. We've had him here in Montana several times. I'm gonna show you some brain scans of two three-year-olds from Dr. Bruce Perry. On the left, is a normal scan of a three-year-old. On the right is the scan of a severely neglected three-year-old. Actual size comparison. Do you see how ACEs can affect brain and body development? In some pretty profound ways. And the implications of those ACEs long-term are stunning. Retrospective. The ACE study is retrospective, right? It's dealing with 17,400 adults looking at their past medical history and how, child, how childhood adversity had affected them. Retrospective. What about ACEs in our kids today? An organization called Child Trends was wondering that, thing, that very same thing. Child Trends is a national organization that collects and reports data on children. Specifically, their health. 
They have something called the Children's National Health Survey. And what's interesting about that is that it's about the children's health as reported by the parents. So it's, this data is right from the house, right from the home these kids are living in. Child Trends took their data and extrapolated it over the ACE framework to come up with what they think are ACEs in our kids today, in our nation. And guess what they found? The majority of our children living in this nation have an ACE score of zero. Whew, that's good news, right? However, in 16 states, over half of the kids have at least one ACE. And in three states, the top states in the nation for kids who have ACEs of four or more already, Montana is one of those states. The children living in Montana right now, according to this Child Trends survey, have four or more ACEs already. Kids Count is another organization you might be familiar with. They're also a national organization, and they also collect and report data on children. We're lucky to have a chapter of theirs working out of the University of Montana, Missoula. This year, they put out a report that said, Montana ranks 30th in the nation for overall child well-being. Two years ago, we were 28th in the nation. We're slipping. In that same report two years ago, they showed us that Montana ranked 50th in the nation, dead last for child health, three years in a row. This year, they say that we're ranked 47th. That's better, but come on, 47th in the nation? Now, child health in this research is defined by low birth weight, children without health insurance, teenage use and abuse of drugs and alcohol, and teenage suicide. And you might know, on a per capita basis, our children, our youth, 15 to 19 years old, are killing themselves more than most states in this nation. We've been in the top four states for many years. Our children are in trouble. Remember the pyramid? This is the rest of the story. So you can see where the adverse childhood experiences is the foundation for the future of human development and brain development. Imagine what can happen if we can mitigate or stop those ACEs from happening today. We can stop that disrupted, interrupted brain development. We can stop risky behaviors and even stop early death. That's how important this topic is. This isn't just a fad. The ACE study gives us the ability to predict the future, but it also gives us the ability to prevent adversity happening now and change the future. One of the most powerful things you can do to change the future for a child is build resilience in that child. And one of the most powerful resilience factors in a human's life is a healthy, nurturing, caring adult relationship. It's not rocket science. Therapy is great and necessary for a lot of people, but a healthy, caring, nurturing adult relationship can change the future for a child. And that can be you. So I know you may have been looking at the ACE study and looking at what the ACEs are. You might be adding up in your head what your ACE score is. Adversity is not destiny. Sear that on your brain. Adversity is not destiny. Just because you have an ACE score, even if you have a high ACE score, it doesn't mean that you're destined for these negative health and social outcomes. In fact, getting back to that healthy, caring, nurturing adult relationship, that alone can change what's happened to a child. And I would argue even change what's happened to an adult. Adversity is not destiny. It changes the conversation. This is one of the changes that can happen in your mind about other people from What's wrong with that person? So I wonder what happened to that person. You have a new way of thinking. What's wrong with that kid? So I wonder what happened to that child. It's a change of, even the person you see in the mirror, maybe especially the person you see in the mirror, it can erase blame and shame and erase judgment and give us a new way of thinking. This is a new way of thinking. Compassion is the beginning of restoration. And that's what this is about. Compassion is the beginning of restoration. 
And a strong factor of re restoration in somebody is building resilience in them. Resilience is simply adapting to adversity, to trauma in your life. That's what resilience is. It doesn't mean to bounce back. You find new tools to, to work around it. And again, those healthy relationships are a key factor. I don't care if you're nine years old or 89 years old. Relationships is the key. In 2013, Childwise Institute started this initiative called Elevate Montana. We created it with its own logo, its own corporate identity, its own website, because elevating the well-being and futures of our children doesn't belong to Childwise. We want it to belong to everybody. We want it to belong to you. So we hope you'll join this movement of elevating the well-being and futures of our children. A year from now, I hope that you'll walk in this store, any store, walk around the park and hear somebody talking about ACEs. Hear somebody talking about Elevate Montana. The ACE study gives us a common language. You can go away here today and start talking about ACEs now that you have some context for it. And Elevate Montana gives us the motivation and the vehicle to do this together. When we do things together, that's when positive change truly happens. If we really want our children to be healthy, if we really want our families to be healthy, if we really want our communities to be durable and resilient, if we want this state to have a stronger economy, if we really want this Montana state to be a leader in the nation, we have to pay attention to the ACE study. It's not bad news, it's good news, because now we know things differently, we can do things differently. And that change happens starting now, starting with you. And thank you for being the change makers for our kids in Montana. Thank you.